Welcome back to this video series. This is how to create a personal budget using Excel. This is where we've got so far. If you've joined this video, you really need to watch the first one. So look in the description and click on the link to watch the first video and then come back to this video. So let's carry on from where we were. We have our income, our debt payments, and our outgoings all with totals and we have the months across here okay so let's put in some formulae now this is where some people get their backs up get a bit scared um, and are put off excel like i said earlier if you're not interested in this if it's getting too complicated then just make a small donation through my website drop me an email and i'll I'll send the template to you. Okay, so our first total is going to be the total of our income. So the total for September, so we need to add all these together. So all we're going to do in this total box, so C11, is click equals, sum, and then we're going to open a bracket. So equals SUM, open a bracket, that's shift nine to open a bracket on my keyboard. We're then going to highlight all of our income for September. It may be that you have a long list. Just highlight everything that's under income for September. Close the bracket. That's shift zero on my keyboard. Enter. We can then click on that cell where the formula is and drag just like we did with the months and that will copy the formula right across the page and we're actually going to go one extra so past August into this new line here and let's put another total here so total for the year we can make that bold and underline that now let's do the same with debt payments so equals sum open bracket highlight the payments for September or whatever month you have in this first column click enter drag that across once again and then for our out outgoings so equals SUM sum open bracket highlight close bracket enter and let's drag that across Okay, and while we're doing formulae, let's do the same here for our totals. So equals sum. So this will give us our total for our wage over the next 12 months. So equals sum across the template, close bracket, enter. And if you click on that and drag down, then we can do the same with our debt payments. So credit card one equals sum open bracket drag across close bracket enter once again drag down and then again here equals sum open bracket drag across close bracket enter and drag this down so that's our template created now we just need to fill it in so our wage let me give you some tips and pointers to each of these so our wage first of all that's our net wage that's actually our take home pay and we don't really want to include taxes and national insurance and things that are deducted from our pay because we can't really budget for that because it's going to be taken anyway so that, just put the amount that you take home so let's just say we get 1800 pounds or 1800 dollars each month it's always the same it could be in december that we get a a uh, slight bonus so we get a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars bonus so we can put that as 1900 and then once again just do 1800 and we can click on these boxes and drag 
to bring across. It just saves us typing each time. So 1800 each month, then slightly up in December. Then we go across. Wage two, let's say that, say, let's say that is slightly less. Let's put 1300 and it's the same throughout the year. So we can drag that across. And then our child benefit, let's say it's 150 each month. It could be that we're due another baby, say in April, and it could go up to 180. I don't really know the figures. I'm just guessing here. Now the reason why I'm going through these figures is I want to make sure that you are accounting for or budgeting for any increases or decreases throughout the year. It doesn't matter if it's child benefit or wage, whatever it is, if it's going to be more or lower at certain parts of the year, make sure that's reflected in your budget. Now you'll see our totals are calculated. So 3250 for September, 3250 for October, December it's 3350. And then we have our totals for the year. So this is our total for wage one, wage two, the child benefit, and then the total. To make the total stand out more, you can right click, click format cells and add a border. So you may be on this screen, just click on border at the top. Let's make that nice and thick top and bottom. Just makes it stand out a bit more. You can also make the numbers bold and we can do the same for this cell. and perhaps all of these cells down the bottom here. Make them bold, they stand out. Okay, credit card payments. Now there's usually a minimum payment that you need to make on your credit card each month. I strongly suggest that you make that. And these usually go down over time. Look at previous statements, look at your last statement, see what the minimum payment was. And then if you're unsure by how much they're going to go down by each month, then just contact your credit card provider. And I'm sure they can provide some details for you. But here we go. So you see this slowly decreases over time as the debt decreases. Our second credit card, let's say it's a lot less, say, 30. Something like this. Loan payments, they're generally fixed. So let's say it's £150.25 each month. And there we have it. So we have our totals each month. You'll see that these are going down as our minimum credit card payments are made. We start at 280.25 in 12 months time. That's down to 237.25. Our total debt payments for the year and then totals of each debt to the right here. Okay, our rent, let's say that is 725 each month. It doesn't change. It could be our mortgage, council tax. Let's say that is 110. And there's usually no council tax in March, I believe. I cannot recall from memory. Let's put zero there for March. But make sure, once again, I'm just trying to demonstrate this, that everything's reflected. We don't, I don't pay council tax every month of the year. It's usually March and April or just one month that council tax isn't paid. So make sure this is reflected. Sometimes it's, it's the same with insurance for the last month in the insurance policy there is no payment so make sure that's reflected car payments that could be the same each month so let's say 180 75 bring that across 24 pound 50 for your phone rental phone line rental and broadband electricity could be 55 a month If you're unsure about electricity and other bills, then just 
go through previous bank statements, see what it's been for the last 12 months. That should give you a good guesstimate to what to put down in the budget. Mobiles, mine's a fixed contract. I think it's £22 a month. So let's put that in. TV license, don't have a clue how much that is these days. Let's say £11 a month. If you're not in the UK, you probably don't have a clue what a TV license is. Car insurance, it says 45 a month and we make no payment in January. So put that as not. Then our policy is due for renewal and we expect it to come down slightly. So we'll put 41 in. Car tax, let's say £16 a month. Home insurance, £6 a month. Hopefully you'll take a bit more time into filling this in than I am and be a bit more careful. This is purely for demonstration purposes. AA membership, let's say it's once a year in... What month are we in? April. Let's say it's in April, £68. So you'll have some payments that only come out once a year. The best thing to do if you have online banking, you can view a list of your direct debits and standing orders. Even if they go out annually, it will show on that list. So that may be helpful to you too as you prepare budgets. Now fuel, this is when things start to get very variable. Once again, the best thing to do is look at bank statements, see how much you've been spending at fuel garages or fuel stations in the past, and that will give you a good reflection of the future. If you are trying to save money and cut back, it could be that you can make plans to spend a bit less and take 5% off what you're currently spending, but you need to keep it realistic. But I'll put 140 in here per month and drag that across. Food bills, I'll say £400 a month. Once again, you will need to investigate this further. And then days out, you could put £300 a month, I don't really know. And then in December, let's say it's going to go up to £700. Could be that off because of Christmas and things, our fuel could go up also in December, say 280. And let's carry on 300. Our food bill is likely to go up in December too, let's put 600. Okay, then our last section, once that is all done, is to have our monies remaining. So let's do monies remaining. Once again, we can make this bold and underline. And our monies remaining is just going to be another formula. It's going to be equals the total money coming in for the month minus, so I've got C11 minus the total debt payments minus the total money out. We can click enter and that will give us our money remaining. If we click on that and drag it across, we can make them bold, put some borders on like so. Let's get rid of the border for this one. I don't think it's really needed. And there we have it. So we have about 900 to a thousand pound remaining each month that increases near the end of the year as our debt payments are coming down, especially with our credit cards. We don't save as much or have much money remaining in December due to all the increase outgoings. And then we save about 11,000 pound a year. Now, there may be a lot of you watching this thinking, oh man, I wish I saved 900 pound or had 900 pound remaining at the end of each month. 
This is just an example. You may have some minus figures here. And if you have, then it's important that you're doing a budget so you can get out of those minus figures and have some positive figures. If you're in debt and you do have positive figures down the bottom here, there are a couple of options available to you, but I would suggest that you use any money remaining at the end of each month or perhaps a large portion of that money remaining to pay off debts and get those debts down. Hopefully this has been of benefit to you. I do have other videos on my YouTube channel on using Excel. One of the most popular is how to create a spreadsheet, a bookkeeping spreadsheet using Excel. I believe there is a link in the description below so you can use that. If you have any questions at all, just please make a donation and get in contact. Info at bpfs-online.com. Thank you for watching.